After living in a new country for long enough, it's natural for some aspects of that culture to rub off on you. Living in a new place can also give you new perspectives on things. Being in China has taught me so many things, but for the sake of time, I'm going to tell you about five things that living in China has taught me. Now, some of these things are positive and some not so much, but I really want to try and stay as honest as I can for this video. So you'll have to uh, excuse my face, I kind of have a sunburn. But the first thing I wanted to talk about was how to relax. Okay, now this sounds a little bit weird, but Chinese people are very comfortable in their environment. It's, it's kind of like everywhere is their home. A good example of this would be like when you watch them eat. There's no need to consider what other people are doing or what they think of you. You can sit down, relax, laugh, be loud. I guess, I don't know, spit on the floor is a poor example, but you know, everyone's just sort of doing their own thing. Um, it's a very comfortable atmosphere. It's a lot more fun because, you know, when you compare it to the West, there's a lot of do's and don'ts when you're eating, you know. Um, and it's just different for me, like especially as a Canadian, where the word sorry has been drilled into my head. I once said sorry to a loose piece of cobblestone I tripped over while walking in Montreal. Like, I've even had people yell at me for saying sorry too much and then I respond by, being, by saying sorry for saying sorry too much. But yeah, no, China's really taught me to relax more in public atmospheres, to not really care about what people are thinking of me, that kind of thing. So if you ever get the uh, chance to eat with Chinese people, they'll often say, sit, 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 eat, 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 drink, 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 relax, relax, relax. The more, the more relaxed you are, the more fun you're having, the more happy everyone is. Now this is something that's really difficult for Western people to accept. We often kind of uh, label that kind of behavior as rude. Uh, when in China, it's just, the way to be. Number two is the idea of honesty. Now this one doesn't necessarily have so much to do with Chinese culture rather than appreciating my own. See in China it's very difficult for Chinese people to say what they really mean. Um, they kind of beat around the bush um, you could say. Uh, it's you know a lot of Chinese interactions are just a series of white lies and that makes it really difficult to have real meaningful relationships and friendships when the other person just isn't being completely honest. Um, just to give you like a really simplified example of this, let's say you have plans to go out uh, and hang out with one of your Chinese friends. Um, instead of, you know, maybe that Chinese friend doesn't really want to in that particular time, they'll kind of say a white lie and they'll say, oh, sorry, you know, I, I don't feel well or something came up. Um, and the whole idea is that no one loses face. No one looks bad in that scenario. Um, and I know Western people do that a lot. That's just a really simple, um, kind of analogy to get your head around the idea. Um, but honesty is something, you know, Chinese people aren't very good at particularly. And it's, you know, it's something that I've come to really appreciate about my own culture. And number three are the obvious practical things I kind of want to get out of the way, which is uh, learning Chinese. Um, I'll be the first to admit that after four years of living here, my Chinese should be a little bit better, but it's still something I'm really proud of. It still feels really cool that I'm able to talk to a whole new group of people with new ideas and new outlooks on life. Um, it's not easy. It takes a lot of work to learn a new language if you're interested in that. But it's something I definitely appreciate um, about living here. I've also been able to learn how to ride a motorcycle, albeit a lot differently than what I would have learned if I lived in the West. But there's advantages to that. Like I feel like I can avoid accidents quite a bit more um, and, or get into quite some serious ones as well. Uh, but that's something that living in China has definitely given me is a skill. Um, Another thing I've learned how to do here that's quite practical is barter with shop owners. Um, you know, because if you're going to shop for things in China, you can negotiate the price, which I feel like is not something I would have gotten had I decided to stay in Canada. Number four, and this is one of those negative points I was mentioning earlier in the video, is that life is cheap. So if you decide to live on the more kind of adventurous side of life, um, say for example, you want to decide that you want to drive here, or if you want to go to a place where there's not so much access to, for help for foreigners, this place can get pretty dangerous. Uh, for example, like I've lived, I've been fortunate enough to grow up in a place like Canada where I've never had to see like a really horrible traffic accident or dead people kind of in public. Whereas in China, because I ride a lot, um, you know, I'll see an, just an awful traffic accident maybe once every couple of months. Um, and you know, a dead body maybe like <laughs> once a year. Uh, it's not something you'll probably have to worry about as a foreigner should you choose to live in like a bigger city, but it is kind of a part of 
uh, life here that's really taught me to not take those risks on a bike, to sort of take away that testosterone-filled need for speed and be quite a bit more responsible with my life. Because um, I feel like, you know, in Canada it's kind of lost, or in the West it's kind of lost um, on people because everything is just so safe uh, compared to a place like this. But it's definitely something that um, hit me quite hard when I came here. It's just, um, again, just how cheap life is, you know? So in the West, like every rider understands that every time you get on that bike, you kind of have to accept the fact that something really bad can happen to you. Whereas in China, every time you get on a bike, that risk is quite a bit higher uh, just because of the driving culture here. And my last point is just how to be more friendly. Uh, to make this comparison to Japanese people, it's sort of, I guess, a stereotype for them to be uh, quite cold and quiet and difficult to know at first. Whereas Chinese people are the polar opposite of that. They're very open, very friendly, very nice at first. Um, you know, as a foreigner, if you're walking around and you sit down at a restaurant, it's not uncommon for uh, Chinese people to offer a drink or, you know, have a quick chat with you. That has more to do with the fact that you're a foreigner, but it still kind of shows just how friendly people are here. You know, if you're in an elevator or something, they'll often start up a quick conversation. Uh, it's just Chinese people are really, really, really nice. So like as someone, like I would consider myself an introvert, I'm quite shy. Uh, being in China has made me feel a lot more comfortable with approaching people and not shying away from conversations. It's kind of given me this attitude of, of openness and friendliness to everyone around me. Uh, China's quite a communal place. Um, they're incredibly friendly. Uh, for the most part, I know a lot of these are generalizations, but that side of Chinese people has definitely rubbed off on me. So if you're planning on moving to China, hopefully this video can give you some insight to what you can look forward to. I'm sure other people have had different experiences than I did, so if you have, then please feel free to comment uh, in the comment section. I don't think it matters where you live in the world, but one thing is for sure. It's really important that we all respect and learn from each other. I can certainly say that I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have lived here and everything I've learned. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are just five things that personally, uh, you know, China has taught me, China has given me. Um, you know, if you guys want to check out my Facebook page, you can get a hold of me there. You can send a message um, or you can message me on YouTube. I also have Patreon. Um, big, big thank you to everyone who watches my videos, especially my last one where I talked about kind of the more negative aspects of my life. Uh, the amount of support I got in the comments is huge. I got something like 800 comments or something on that video and like 90% of them were super supportive and super nice. And I, it's, it's kind of difficult to express how thankful I am because that really lifted my spirits and really made me feel uh, a lot better about how things are going. Um, another thing I wanted to address was a lot of people, my last video I said, um, you know, I literally have no friends. What I, <laughs> what I meant to say was um, I literally have no Chinese friends. I do have some foreign friends. Uh, me and Seamilk are still fine. I just wanted to clear that up because it seems like people are kind of confused about that. Uh, some of these things that I've learned here, I hope to take home with me if I ever go home one day. And some of those not so much. I don't think my family would really appreciate me, you know, spitting on the floor and drinking and being loud and just being obnoxious with my friends. Uh, but I definitely appreciate everything that this place has given me. Um, it, it's hard because when you are living in a place for long enough, that place kind of becomes your home because you assimilate yourself with that culture in a lot of ways. And so, you know, if ever I decide to say goodbye, it makes that goodbye quite a bit more difficult. Whereas if I stayed here for a year, yeah, it's just it's a little bit easier to let go. Just before I let you guys go, I'm just, I'm editing this video right now. Um, I wanted to express again how thankful I am for everyone in the comment section who were saying those really, really, uh, those kind things. Um, you know, when everything seems to be going not so well to know that um, I still have you guys and the YouTube community, community uh, supporting me. And, you know, with those comments, you guys have really uh, pushed me to make this video and plan a whole bunch more. Uh, that, that's really huge for me. Um, so, you know, at least now I have more things to do with my time um, to know that you guys, you know, with, with your support at my, at my back. The other thing I wanted to say is that uh, Seamilk, Winston, uh, Mark, and Rick, uh, you know, all the boys are up there in the north filming Conquering Northern China. Um, it'd, be, it'd be really huge if you guys showed your support to them. Watch their videos on YouTube. Go check out Winston's channel. I know you probably already know about him. Go check out Seamilk's channel. Even go check out Mark's channel. Uh, comment on their videos, wishing them the best of luck. Share the videos around. 
And um, you know, for any haters out there, I feel like all of our, uh, our good friend Hokai can sum it up with this statement right here. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs>